Hello world, and welcome back to a new video. To state that the Android ecosystem has undergone several changes in those past years is definitely an understatement. However, one of the things that has remained unchanged is activity launch modes. Launch mode is the attribute that dictates the behavior of a specific activity, as far as navigation to it is concerned. As an application grows, it's not uncommon for some more advanced or even weird requirements to start making an appearance. When those requirements start messing with different activity presenting rules, for example, one activity should not exist twice in the application, then it's our signal to start utilizing the four different launch modes. First, we need to take a look into two concepts, starting by defining the task. A task is a collection of activities that users interact with when trying to do something in your application. The app can have n number of tasks, and the first activity in that task is called the root activity of the task. Following up with the Android backstack, by default, each activity that a user launches within your app is maintained in the same stack with the order it was launched. It's a LIFO structure, last in, first out. Activities within the backstack cannot be rearranged. This is very important. They can only be added on top or popped. An activity is added on top when it started and is popped off when the Android back button is pressed. Nowadays, it's all, uh, most commonly a gesture. As the user keeps pressing the button, activities are removed from the top until we reach the root activity of the task. In Android 11 and lower, pressing the back button will finish the root activity. But in Android 12 and later, pressing the back button will simply move the activity and its task in the background just like pressing the home button instead of back. Now this only applies in the root activity of its stack. Once you've reached the first activity where pressing the back button or going back would have nowhere else to go than to terminate the application. In Android 12 and later, application is not terminated. It just goes into the background. But what happens with multiple activities of the same type? We mentioned that activities within the stack cannot be rearranged. This means that if I try to start an activity that already exists in the stack, then a new instance will be created. In essence, we will now have two instances of the same activity within the same stack. However, this is where the different launch modes come to play. They allow us to tweak that behavior when starting a new activity. But of course, not even they can allow us to rearrange the stack. A small note on the multi-window mode. On Android 7 and later, each window has its separate set of tasks. Same for Chromebooks. The system manages tasks or group of them on a per-window basis. So let's see now the ways that we can launch tasks. Just a small disclaimer here. The Android documentation suggests to be cautious when disrupting the default behavior of the system. This is totally understandable. Android is a powerful framework that allows us to bend the rules sometimes but that poses risks. So always test in depth and try to see things through the user lens as the user experience is always the most important factor. Let's talk launch modes. We can define them in two ways. First, as a manifest attribute where the activity declares how it should associate with tasks when it starts. And second, as intent flags in the intent object with which we will start the activity, where we declare how the new activity will associate with the current task. The important thing to note here is that both the target activity can decide for themselves, but also the activity that launches the target can also decide for it. In the case that most of both of them are declaring the behavior, then the first activity's request is honored over the targets. The first launch mode we're going to take a look at is the standard one. This is the default behavior. The system creates a new instance of the activity in the task from which it has started and sends the intent to it. The activity can then be instantiated multiple times. Each instance can belong to different tasks, and one task can have multiple instances. So if you consider activities A, B, C, D, then a valid stack could look like A, B, C, B, B, A. Pressing the back button would naturally pass through all activities in the reverse order, as we mentioned earlier. Next is single top. Single top has two scenarios. If an instance of the activity is already present in the task and it's at the top of that task, then the Android OS will pass the intent data to the on new intent function of the activity instead of creating a new instance. So the same top activity will remain in view, 
but it's going to receive the new intent so it can refresh data and more. On the other hand, if there is no instance of the activity in the task, or the already existing instance of the task is not at the top, then a new instance of the activity will be created. In other words, this would be just like the standard mode. Single top and standard mode have only one difference, and that's in the scenario that an instance of the activity is already present and it's at the top of the task. For example, we have stack A, B, C, D, and then we launch D with single top. The stack would then still be A, B, C, D, whereas with the standard mode, it would be A, B, C, D, D. But if we have the A, B, C, D, and then we launch activity B with single top, then it would be just as if we had launched it with the standard mode. So it would then be A, B, C, D, B. Moving on to the single task launch mode. The system creates the activity at the root of the new task or locates the activity on an existing task. If an instance of the activity already exists and it's at the root of the task, then the system sends the intent to the existing instance through a call to the onNewIntent method rather than creating a new instance. Meanwhile, all of the other activities on top are destroyed. For example, we have A, B, C, and we want to launch A again as single task. Then C and B would be destroyed, and A would be back on top, receiving the intent through the new intent callback. Finally, we have the single instance. It's the same as single task, except that the system does not launch any other activities into the task holding that instance. The activity is always the single and only member of its task. Any activity started by this one will open in a separate task. So in other words, on single task mode, you can launch other activities in the same task on top of the initial single task launch activity. But on the single instance, the single instance activity is alone in the task and cannot be joined by others. So let's say, for example, that we have three activities, A, B, C, and B is defined as single instance. What we would do is we would launch A in the first task. So we have A in task one. Then we would launch B. Since it's single instance, it's automatically started in a separate task. So task number two now holds B and is now visible to the user. Now, if you launch C, then it cannot be launched in the task number two that B exists. So it will be launched on task number one on top of A. And now C will be invisible, will be the one visible to the user. Now, if we're going to launch B again, then we're going to move back to the task number two. And now B is going to be visible to the user receiving the new intent function callback. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, if you have any questions or feedback or anything else you want to mention on the topic, feel free to leave a comment or reach me on my personal links in the description of this video. See you in the next one.